this now goes through a process of installing different drivers, a video driver, a keyboard driver, a mouse driver. It tries to figure this out on its own and install the appropriate drivers. It even tells you your screen might flicker for a little bit during this process. Our next option is for regional settings. So this is currently set to English United States. It is uh, set that way for all users on the computer, and we can change that if we'd like. The keyboard layout is US, and that looks good too, so let's click Next. Now our full name or the name of our company. We'll put my name in and Professor Messer. We'll hit Enter. And our computer name, it's kind of an odd name. It uses the first section of letters from your name and then puts some random stuff at the end. I'm going to use the same configuration that's done in Windows Vista which is Professor PC. It puts dash PC at the end of it for that. And an administrator password. You should always, always set an administrator password during the installation. It does not require that you set one, interestingly enough. It's a bad idea. Always have an administrator password on your computer. And let's make sure that the clocks look good. The time zone where I am is actually Eastern time. So I'm going to move down in my list and choose Eastern time. US and Canada, and click Next. Now we're going to install the networking components of Windows 2000. For networking, we're asked, is this computer on a domain, or is it a member of a work group? And my work group here in the lab is the one here in Florida, if I spell that properly. If you were in an enterprise environment, you're on a Windows domain, then you would say you're going to be a member of the domain, and then you'd be prompted for the rights to be able to add it to the domain. When we click Next, it's going to begin the process of now copying down the components it needs to finish up this installation process. Now that Windows 2000 is installed, it's going to reboot the computer. It gives us 15 seconds, or we can simply click the Restart button right now. We've got now our first configuration starting up. It asks for our username and password. And I'll put in my password. And now we get our Windows 2000 start sounds and our initial desktop. When we first start Windows 2000, it gives us this getting started screen so we can go from here. And at this point, we know that our Windows 2000 is set up properly and everything is running exactly as we would expect. Our mouse is here. We can see our desktop. We've got all the things we might need to be run up and running with Windows 2000. And we can now proceed to the post install phase. Our post installation for Windows 2000 is not unlike any other operating system. We want to be sure that we don't see any error messages, that the screen looks the way it should. If there's anything that looks a little too different, we want to be sure we address that now. If it's a brand new computer, some people like to turn it on, let it run overnight, and make sure all of the hardware components are running just fine. We want to be sure we've got the latest service packs and that our operating system is up to date. If there are security patches that are outside the scope of those service pack, make sure that you have all of the latest security patches installed. And your hardware needs to have the latest drivers as well, especially if you are working with brand new system, you've got hardware there, you want to be sure you've got the latest drivers for video, for your keyboard, for your mouse, and everything else. And if there are applications, especially third-party applications, make sure you have the updates for those as well. Let's see what we've learned about installing Windows 2000. Our first question is, what is the minimum amount of hard drive space required for Windows 2000 Professional? This is a pretty paltry amount considering the hard drives we have these days. Only 650 megabytes is required. Our next question, what is the lowest resolution video supported by Windows 2000? Interestingly enough, that's what we were running on this system, and it's VGA 640 by 480. And lastly, what post-install process is required to ensure hardware support by the operating system? Certain pieces in here, if we're going to update the hardware, then we're going to make sure we have the latest drivers and that they are updated as well. Well, that covers everything you need to know about installing Windows 2000 from our 22701 Section 3.3. If you'd like to watch any of our other videos, participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website at 3aplus.com.